And uh, I really apologize for not being with you. Uh, everything was prepared, but I had to cancel uh, the train and, uh, and the time with you. Uh, I would have been very uh, keen to spend the evening or so. <laughs> okay, so is life. Uh, so uh, I, I will talk of a project which is kind of a bit similar with uh, what uh, Kong Duk just uh, presented. So nice uh, for the introduction that he made. Um, I will more speak about the logger and not much about the sensors. Uh, the position is that the talk will be a bit different because I'm not a computer guy. I am uh, the, the crop physiology guide. And uh, do it yourself is going to be a keyword uh, in the, the my learning process uh, through uh, through designing uh, the, the, this instrument. So the reason I went that there is that as uh, several of you, I first wanted to get the uh, computer science uh, complementarity by going to my colleague, uh, Master TV, and so on in the in the computer department. Uh, the problem is that I get some kind of a prototype that is never possible to get operational. So at some stage, I wanted to have to gain, to, to keep the flexibility and the, the generosity of uh, doing things and designing things yourself, but at the same time being able to run that in an operational way. So if you have a secret to do it with your colleague, just let me know, but I just could not do it. So uh, the, the, the project, uh, with which this related the finite project that uh, David mentioned uh, two times already. Uh, in particular, within that project, we have one use case which aims at connecting uh, research infrastructures to uh, innovation in, at the farm level. So we want to get uh, farmers and uh, public research organization, which I see as the main places for uh, crop management innovation practices. Uh, with uh, research institution and the research infrastructures that have the, uh, the, 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 the the analytical and the observational uh, power that the farmers don't don't have. Oops. So uh, the aim that we want to reach is to uh, perform uh, this kind of experiment uh, where we use uh, things that come from uh, existing data sets analytics. Uh, remote sensing, so earth observation products, uh, to think with uh, private actor, FCE here is a private actor for soil capital, uh, to sketch and to define a scientific question based on agricultural observation on, on their innovation, and then have a parallel workflow where an experiment is conducted in research infrastructure, but at the same time, a simpler experiment is done in farmers' fields. So in a network, and the ambition is that the network can be wide. So that's why the Earth observation uh, is, is here. Uh, at the end of the day, all the data uh, come back to a central node where essentially the uh, private actor is doing the analysis with support of the, the, the scientists and end up with the dissemination and implementation. So we are going to make two loops uh, on that in, in the finite uh, project. And the basic point that we have is that when you are talking about testing in networks, we probably mean of hundreds of fields. Um, and so how do we make uh, the observation in, in those fields is, uh, and the scale up is, is really important here. Uh, so that's where the uh, data logger projects uh, come into play. So what we want to do is to have a data logger that we can deploy in a large number of units, more than 100. Uh, with similar speci specification as what uh, Kongdu just say, so flexible to, you know, to allow the uh, connection to uh, many types of sensors. Uh, having one hardware for dozens of applications, which means that we can plug and play different uh, mob uh, modules to extend the uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, that is uh, autonomous in terms of uh, so energy, so solar powered and wireless uh, connected. So the constraint that we put ourselves is we want to have something which is uh, do-it-yourself for the reason that I mentioned, and the target budget for, budget for the logger would be around 25 uh, euros. Like we need to have some targets before and then we see after where we actually get. So uh, here it becomes a bit technical, but it's technical for a crop physiology. So uh, we should all be uh, uh, 
able to understand the, the different parts that we will have in a, in a logger is a power source uh, that will uh, supply a microcontroller units. Uh, so we saw one in the in the previous uh, slides, which is a very small uh, computer that can be connected to a variable number of sensors and also is connected to a wireless communication model that will ensure uh, network access uh, so that the data can be delivered to a server. So in principle, in my mind, the microcontroller is not, the logger is not going to keep the data on board, uh, but this could be an option uh, if, uh, if needed. So I'm going uh, over the different uh, parts to say a number of things that I learned uh, by, uh, by, uh, by, by learning. So the, the power supply unit has a, a battery, the problem is that battery will deliver variable voltage according to the level of charge. So we rely on the on the other side, the device, the device are the sensors here, will require stable and accurate voltage. These are typical uh, voltage that we find in, in for different sensors. Uh, in addition, the battery needs protection if it is fully charged. And uh, another point is that I learned that we can actually operate the device in a smart way so that we can reduce the current typically by supplying the different sensors only when they need to operate. And that was also mentioned a little bit by a uh, before. So here are the different uh, parts of a power supply unit. So a, a solar, uh, solar panel. A uh, small battery. Uh, this is the the charge module, and so all, all these are things that we find easily on Amazon or on AliExpress, uh, AliExpress for very uh, small prices. And uh, but then the uh, accurate voltage uh, sometimes become a bit more tricky to find modules, and it's cheaper to do it. Uh, so uh, here I need. This is why I show this. Uh, I've been learning to understand uh, this kind of uh, schematics that explain uh, how you generate a, a, a fixed voltage supply based on the variable input with a number of uh, small components. You remember your uh, physics class is in the uh, first or second bachelor. And from the schematics, then there, there are some things that I need to do myself. Uh, and here with uh, official parts from Farnell, so it's not uh, Chinese copies, so the, I can expect that it, they are going to work in a, in a reliable way uh, for a long term. Uh, the, the cost is 1.5 euro. Uh, the microcontroller unit, this is a beautiful world. There are uh, hundreds of different uh, solutions available. Uh, different aspect is in selecting a microcontroller is uh, the processing power and the memory, depending on what you want to do, actually, if you are going to collect an image and process millions of pixels or just one number from one sensor, it's going to be different. Uh, a critical part is the number of uh, input output uh, pins. Uh, so every one of those little uh, copper parts that you see here on, on, on this microcontroller. Uh, the, the, so I think that most of the controller we go up to 30, 40, of those uh, input outputs that you can assign to different sensors. So basically, uh, you can end up with a, one small microcontroller controlling five to 100 of, uh, of uh, sensors uh, at the same time. I also learned that the way you, uh, uh, a module, uh, a uh, microcontroller unit is uh, communicating with a sensors is using some kind of a standard communication protocol. And these are not, uh, there are not so many of them. So I had to learn uh, one, two, three, four. And, and, and with that, I was uh, happy for all what I needed. Um, the current consumption of those uh, microcontrollers are going to be uh, an important part. They, they are mostly the most hungry device in, in the logger, but hopefully uh, some of them have different sleep modes. You can wake them up and get them to sleep so that uh, between two measurements, they essentially don't consume uh, a lot. And uh, another part is also the ease of development. So here I show the Raspberry Pico and the ESP32. Uh, they come with an integration uh, development environment. 
Uh, they support uh, C, they support Python, so uh, rapid prototyping, and a lot of libraries are available if you want to, to play with them. And the cost is uh, four euro for uh, one microcontroller. Uh, another part of a data logger is a real-time clock to keep track of time, uh, because you want uh, probably the, when, when your microcontroller is, is asleep, uh, well, it's sleeping, so you would like it to, to wake up at, uh, at the right time. Uh, so the ESP32 can sleep itself, uh, but the Raspberry Pico does not. So uh, this is a small uh, device. The price, oh, I forgot to put the price, which is around 2.5 euros. Uh, it's going to keep the time uh, uh, to, the, to, to the second uh, precision. Uh, the, another part of a connected logger, logger will be the wireless communication. And here again, we find small modules that are available and, and, and quite cheap. So uh, uh, Kwong Duke mentioned LoRa, which is low power with a, a range of communication between two devices, which can be up to 10 kilometer range. Well, that's an official specification, but I'm not getting to there. Uh, you, you may need to deploy gateway if you want to access a global network, but you can work with a local network that you manage yourself, as uh, uh, Kongduk uh, uh, said. Uh, you, you can use it free if you don't rely on global operators. And uh, the limitation, one of the limitations of LoRa is you can send the packets of data that you send, the size of the packets is a few characters. So you're not going to send a picture by a uh, by, by LoRa. Uh, another kind is a GPRS, so a, a classical cell phone. It's, it's more power hungry, but it gives you, well, worldwide access. I'm a Belgian, and in Belgium, uh, the network coverage is quite good, but it's not the same uh, as well as uh, everywhere. Um, and also uh, the ESP32 has a Wi-Fi uh, on board, which is also power hungry but that we can use if uh, it turns out that your uh, data logger is close to a Wi-Fi access point, such as the uh, on-farm, uh, for example. Uh, again, the price of those components is uh, four euros or something. And this is a LoRa uh, module, and this is a, a cell phone a module. And on the back side, you don't see it, but you have the slots to put your uh, SIM card. Uh, then wh what I'm not going to talk uh, much about is the sensors and the enclosure, because this is part of, uh, of, of the design uh, indeed. Uh, so the sensors, uh, I think an important point to note is that uh, you can potentially find sensor for every, virtually everything. And if you don't find a sensor for something today, it's likely that you will find it uh, in the near future. Uh, but essentially, they rely on various uh, physics and electronics. And I would uh, probably make a distinction between a pure analogic uh, device like a thermistor that is generating, generating a variable resistance. And so you measure a voltage or tension on a continuous scale. So any, any noise on that signal is going to be a noise in your data. And uh, you require some uh, electronic equipment like an analogic digital converter to convert that continuous uh, signal into a digital number uh, that you use in Python or, or, or in C. And this analogic to digital conversion can be something tricky that the, 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 the equipment that does that can be temperature sensitive or, or whatever. So this is a part that you would like to have as a good quality. Uh, you you have, and this is increasing in, in number, uh, analogic device, but they have built in within the device, you have the uh, analogic to digital conversion. So it makes your life much more easy. You don't have to take care about temperature compensation and, and so on. But maybe you will find a difference between the, uh, the parts that you buy on AliExpress and the one that you buy to the manufacturer. And I've experienced some surprise uh, in, in, in that. Then you have some uh, pure digital uh, sensors, uh, typically something that is detecting an event or counting a pulse, like you would have in a wind uh, in, in, in a wind sensor that counts the number of turns per second. Uh, these ones don't consume a lot of energy, but they probably require your microcontroller to be awake a lot of the time to monitor the event as, as they come. 
Uh, and then there is another distinction between the point sensors and the camera sensors. Point sensor that will essentially have one pixel and camera that will generate a lot of pixels. Uh, for the farm experiment, I'm more thinking to point sensors. Uh, some, some can be a very, uh, uh, very good in terms of data that they provide. Uh, so sensors have different supplied voltage. So you may have on the same uh, logger the need to connect something which works in 1.8 volt and another one that works on 3 volts. So you need to have the different power supplies uh, on board. And pay attention, some of those sensors can be hungry, and so those ones you want to wake to wake them up uh, only the the li limited strict limited time that that is needed. Uh, so I'm not here not yet at the point of uh, enclosure and stick mounting, but uh, as mentioned in the first talk this afternoon, it's going to be as important and tricky as the rest. Uh, probably I am aware of that. So uh, an example of sensor that we uh, develop in the framework of a PhD thesis was a, a multispectral uh, camera with uh, eight ESP32 uh, cam modules. So each module is an ESP32 plus a two megapixel camera. It cost around five euro. And uh, using that, we were able during the thesis to develop a sensor that was on field and providing uh, what we needed to estimate soil coverage over time for different uh, crops in the market gardening uh, study. And well, given the difference that we, we wanted to see, it was sufficient in terms of uh, accuracy. Uh, another example that uh, I can show is uh, that was in a, in, a, in a master thesis in a greenhouse experiment uh, where we wanted to monitor uh, water, deficit, water stress on uh, potato plants. And so uh, one of the things we use is a, a thermal uh, sensor that was put on top. You see one here, it's a gray uh, tube uh, fitted above the, ca the, the, the canopy. It's viewed with a, a viewing angle of more or less 20 degrees. Um, and so we also have uh, different uh, reference here uh, of, of different gray levels that, that we can use to monitor over time with a one, one minute resolution uh, the, the, the evolution of uh, leaf temperature and of the, the different references temperature. So the cost here is 15 euro. Uh, that, that's where I get an interesting experience where I actually bought that on AliExpress for uh, five euro. And then I was trying to configure it as explained in the data sheet and it was not much responding as, it, as described. Then I contacted the, the, the manufacturer, which turned out to be a Belgian company. I didn't know that before. And they told me, well, what you buy on AliExpress might be a copy of what we design, and I'm not warranty anything on the. So finally, I end up buying the, the real one. It's a bit uh, more expensive, but uh, still uh, livable. So I, I think an important message that I want to get for uh, do-it-yourself uh, people here is that to do it yourself is, does not necessarily mean compromising quality on uh, on the whole uh, system. Uh, for example, digital parts uh, and, and, and its parts can make your life very easy. Uh, the troubles that you have with the digital signals come with high speed or with long cables, and it is really not what we encounter in our IoT applications. On the other hand, analogic parts require certainly electronic expertise, and I just don't dare putting my finger there. So I simply try to avoid uh, analogic uh, stuff. And uh, hybrid parts, so uh, sensors that are analogic by physics, but which do the conversion to the digital signal, I try to rely on good quality. So uh, most of my logger is actually uh, not sensors, so I, I, I try to do uh, everything here with cheap components. But when I get to the uh, sensors, I try to probably compromise and, and, and buy uh, things directly to the manufacturer uh, in EU. Or... So that, that was a table. I will uh, give you the, the presentation so that you can uh, uh, distribute to people who would be interested. Uh, it's a summary of uh, what I did with different parts, different examples, and a bit of my uh, experience there. So mo moving to the next part, something I had to learn is to design that. And essentially, uh, it, it's, it's really 
something which is not complicated because all of the different sections that I see here, the yellow boxes are the different uh, devices in my logger. So here is the LoRa module, that's the ESP32, that's the Raspberry Pico, that's the uh, uh, so, uh, so, sorry, solar charger. Uh, it's essentially very simple. You connect the SPO MISO on the SPO MISO and it works. Uh, so you, you run quite uh, quickly. So that was my first uh, prototype where everything was sold uh, by hand in different, uh, uh, different components uh, separated. And then uh, at some stage, I wanted to have something more uh, cool, more proper. And I went to uh, learn KiCat to do uh, some PCB development. It took me uh, an evening to understand the logics and then one day to design the thing in a way. Uh, and then the production is done by an external company. And in a few days, I get my uh, PCB here to which I can sold uh, all the different components. Uh, so the final assembly is like this. And so uh, this, this part actually fits inside the five millimeter PVC tube. Uh, so the enclosure could be something uh, cheap and you see the, the LoRa antenna is here and the uh, GSM antenna is there. So uh, a key to, uh, to, to the battery life is the power usage. Uh, this is a picture showing you during, uh, this is one measurement session. So it will last, uh, you see here, uh, 400 milliseconds, the time to wake up. So uh, the system has a very low consumption during uh, sleep mode, then wakes up, then we'll make a measurement that you see here, then we'll open a transaction in the LoRa module, and so LoRa is consuming a little bit more. Then LoRa is waiting for an answer and then uh, some activity and we, and we go back to sleep. So you want to minimize the uh, integral under this uh, curve so that you maximize uh, your, your battery life. Uh, in terms of integration, so uh, these are the, oh sorry, these are the different loggers that we have. The the ID I have uh, in, in in terms of uh, farm uh, farm deployment is to have my own gateway. So every of my logger can actually also act as a gateway, and we can think that if the gateway is removed in the field, then the LoRa communication will be continued with the uh, GSM uh, to, through the provider and getting to internet. While if I am close to a farm, maybe the I will have LoRa connection between the loggers and the gateway. And the gateway, if it is on farm, will have a Wi-Fi access uh, through the internet. And I rely on another work package of uh, FENET where the, uh, an information system is actually uh, developed and that we are using for that. So in terms of uh, budgets, you see the battery, the charger, solar panel, uh, two voltage regulator, RTC module and so on. Uh, I end up uh, close to 30 euros. So uh, I would say with that, if someone stole my, steal my uh, data logger, okay, well, that's, I can live with that. Uh, and also I can think in terms of uh, large scale deployment. And again, this is only the logger, so there is no loss of accuracy uh, in, in, in this because it's not doing any analogic to digital conversion. Uh, so this is a list of the expertise that I needed to get in terms of uh, designing uh, the hardware, some electronic skills, so really not a lot. The time for assembly of a logger is 20 minutes uh, at the moment. Um, do not hesitate to search for advice around you. Internet is nice, human is best. Uh, you will find electronic platforms to help. And also the learning curve can be very quick and this is an addictive process. You? you can believe me. Yeah, or oh, I can stop here. Please, thank you.